Hi, I'm Mr. Simons. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the minimum wage. So we're gonna do a two-part series here. This will be part one. In part one, we'll talk about the economic theory about the minimum wage. So we'll define the minimum wage, we'll show what it does to labor market equilibrium, really go through it from that economic theory perspective. In the second video, we'll take ourselves out into the real world. So we'll have a look at what economists say in terms of the impact of the minimum wage on labor markets and on the economy. Because one of the interesting things about economists, they can't agree, there isn't a consensus on whether a minimum wage is good or bad for employment. So what we'll do is we'll start from the basics. We'll go through that economic theory perspective and then we'll jump into the real world. Okay, let's get started. So the first place to start is to think about the labor market. So the market for workers in an economy. If we think about the market itself, that supply, supply relates to the supply of workers, of individuals who are willing and able to supply their labor to earn a wage. Then in the labor market, demand relates to firms because firms are the group that want that labor. They want those people to help them produce goods and services and to earn revenue in the economy. So where the demand for labor so the firms intersects with the supply of labor, individuals, we get um, labor market equilibrium. And the price equilibrium is the wage. So the wage rate um, that corresponds with the equilibrium amount of labor in an economy. So we're just thinking about that point A, where demand and supply intersect, we get wage equilibrium, and then we get quantity equilibrium. But the point of a minimum wage is to say that this equilibrium is not right, that for some reason the market has got it wrong and it's created an equilibrium wage which is too low. So this is a really important thing to think about, that a minimum wage is a response by the government to the equilibrium wage which it believes is too low for those workers. So what the government says is it says that the wage equilibrium is too low. So what we need to do is we need to lift that minimum wage higher. So what they're doing is they are intervening in the labor market and they are doing price intervention. So if they're creating a minimum wage, so the wage can't go any lower, that what they've done is they've created a price floor. They've intervened through price, and they've created a price floor where the wage cannot drop below that point. So by setting a floor on wages that it creates a whole bunch of other consequences because the wage in the market is higher than it ordinarily would have been if the government just left things to the market. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the whiteboard, we'll draw up labor market equilibrium, and we'll have a look at what those impacts are when a government sets a minimum wage, which is a price floor in this context. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to draw the minimum wage according to economic theory. So what we'll do is we'll start with a regular kind of labor market. So we've got our wage rate, we've got zero, and we've got Q all taking place here. So let's create our curves. So we've got point A, which is labor market equilibrium, which is the intersection of demand and supply. A couple of things we can add here. We can remind ourselves that supply is the supply of labor, which relates to individuals and demand here comes from firms. And we've got wage equilibrium and quantity equilibrium. Something we might add is that that is quantity of labor. Just to remind ourselves we are in this labor market. So like we were saying at the start, that what the government has decided is that WE is too low, that this equilibrium wage level is too low and it's going to set a higher wage, the minimum wage. So if we have a look at what this might look like is we've got this idea that wage equilibrium is too low. And that if we think about who's actually saying that, it's the government. The government is saying wage equilibrium is too low. So what it's going to do is, let's grab orange here, grab a shape here. So what the government is doing is it's saying, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to create 
a minimum wage level that is above equilibrium. So if we look at W1 in this context, this is the government created minimum wage. Now I would call this W1, um, you might call this W min, if that's helpful in the sense that that's a minimum wage. And the reason that this is a minimum is that this is the lowest level that wages can go. So if we draw our person here, that this is a flaw here. So that W1 is the government created minimum wage. And what we can say is that this has the impact or that actually better, this is an example of a price flaw that the wage cannot drop below this level. That's why this person is standing here. The important thing to know is that whenever the government does something, it has its reasons for doing it, but there are unintended consequences of its actions. So in this situation, the government is trying to increase the wage level to give more income to people that are at that minimum wage level. But certain things are going to happen in the market when it intervenes. One thing we could talk about is that this is a price floor, so that this is... This is a form of price intervention, not quantity intervention. But let's create our extra points. So we've got here, so this is B, and this is C. So what we'll do is we'll just bring these down. So let's have a look here. So the first thing, let's have a look at C. Um, let's have a look at C. Point C is where the minimum wage intersects with the supply curve. So we'll call this here, this is QS, because this is where it intersects with supply. And you can see here that we could just easily add the D there, that this is where it intersects with quantity demanded. So we've got an interesting situation that is emerging. What we'll do is we'll just change up our color pen here. So what we can say is that at W1, so quantity supplied expands. And the reason it expands is that as the wage goes up, right, from we increase from wage equilibrium to wage one, that more people are wanting to supply their labor because they're going to get higher wages. So again, when the wages go up, more people wish to supply their labor. And it's an expansion because it's motivated by price. On the flip side, can you have a look at the demand? And remember that comes from firms, that actually demand is going to get smaller. That what we can say is that quantity demanded will contract because as wages go up, well, as the minimum wage goes up, then firms are going to want less labor because it's more expensive. So that on the one hand, you've got more people wanting to supply their labor, that expansion in quantity supplied, but firms want less, that contraction in quantity demanded. This is going to create a situation. So if we look at it here and say, if this is a bit confusing, let's give this some numbers. Let's say that quantity supplied is 1,000, that this is 500, and this is 250. So this is purely made up numbers. So if I go over here, that at wage one, that quantity supplied will be greater than quantity demanded. What I mean by that is my made up 1000 will be greater than 250. So we've got excess supply in the labor market. And when we've got excess supply in the labor market, that creates unemployment because more people are looking for work than firms have jobs. So therefore it's a rise in unemployment. So that this is what we might say is the consequence of the government creating this minimum wage and this price floor. So before we move on, let's just highlight a couple of things. Okay, so the first thing we know is that we start at wage equilibrium and the government is saying is that this is far too low. What the government says is we should put in a minimum wage that is W1, that is higher up. So that this is acting as a price floor because our friend over here can't fall below it. That is the flaw. Then as a consequence, if we go over here, we can see that quantity supplied will expand and quantity, ooh, quantity S as well, that quantity supplied will expand and quantity demanded will contract. Good pickup. So quantity demanded will contract. And then as a result of all this, we'll put this in green, 
As a result of all this, if we've got a situation where quantity supplied exceeds quantity demanded, we have excess supply of labor and a rise in unemployment. And that's the economic theory of uh, the minimum wage and how it will affect market equilibrium. So to sum up here, the government has had a look at the labor market and it said that wage equilibrium, the equilibrium that's set when demand and supply for in, uh, labor intersect, that that's too low. So the government is saying, let's lift the wage. Let's create a minimum wage that is higher than equilibrium. And this is a price floor. But it's very important to know that this intervention this form of price intervention has consequences, as we've seen with the graph. So what's going to happen is that more people want to work because wages are higher, but firms want fewer employees because they are more expensive. So we're going to get excess supply and unemployment. Now, it's important to note that this is what the economic theory is saying. The economic theory is saying if you set a minimum wage, you will get higher unemployment. But what we're going to do in the second video of this series is we're going to have a look at what economists actually think happens in the real world, that sometimes that theory doesn't hold up, that it doesn't lead to higher unemployment or it leads to higher unemployment for some groups, but not everyone. Anyway, no spoilers. We'll get to that. So this was an introduction to the minimum wage. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the comments. And as always, Thank you very much for watching.